Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Level Up. This is Rick, and I am stupidly excited to show you this game. Um, this is the Hearthstone beta right now, and this is the uh, upcoming... It's going to be a free-to-play card game uh, by one of my favorite game companies of all time, Blizzard Entertainment. Um, this is a World of Warcraft-esque themed um, card game, or at least a Warcraft-esque themed card game. Um, in this game, you're actually going to play a specific type of class. So if I were to go and create a new deck, um, you can see here that these classes will be unlocked essentially one at a time, and each of these is based on the nine core classes in World of Warcraft. Um, so we got Garrosh representing the warrior, we have Thrall representing the shaman, uh, Valyr representing the rogue, we got Uther the paladin, Rexar the hunter, um, Mr. Stormrage the druid, um, I think that's Gul'dan the Warlock, uh, Jaina the Mage, and then Anduin the Priest. Um, each of these classes have their own built-in mechanics and their own built-in cards um, associated with them. So think of these classes kind of like the color of magic you're going to play in uh, Magic the Gathering. Um, there's also neutral cards that can be used between the different classes. Um, so some of the different things here, um, Druid has a lot of abilities that allow you to buff, um, you know, what, what I really like about Hearthstone so far is that this game is, it feels to me like a very natural, um, uh, a very natural, uh, essentially port of the Warcraft universe into a card game. Um, the Druid would play like a Druid in World of Warcraft. Um, same thing with the Hunter and the Mage and the Paladin and so on and so forth. They all kind of play that way. Um, so the Druid allows me to, again to use some shape-shifting abilities and also play a lot of different um, buffing spells and healing spells to kind of keep my armies going. Um, really neat stuff that you can do with the Druid. I haven't really played them much other than just the essential um, of playing against them and seeing the kind of basic decks. Um, everything you see here is the very basic of the basic decks. This is the first uh, component. Um, so the first thing you're going to do whenever you get the game is go into a practice mode. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it actually will walk you through a tutorial first with a random class here. Um, so you can see I've got these different heroes and each of these heroes have a level and uh, depending on the level you get you unlock cards for that class um, after level 10 you'll actually unlock a expert mode that you can go and practice on and that unlocks a lot more um, of the uh, advanced mechanics typically a normal mode you're going to be dealing with kind of the same thing they're going to be creatures they're going to be a couple spells there may be even an interrupt or two um, but there's not going to be too much of the latter there. It's mainly going to be, I'm going to lay my creatures down before you lay yours down, and I'm going to play my spells to knock out your creatures. Um, the advanced mode that, that I've played so far, and what I've played against the uh, human uh, um, opponents, um, kind of resembles a, a little bit more of the advanced things, uh, such, such as... Uh, the mage has some spells that they can play on themselves that are hidden and that actually activate once a certain condition is met. So it's a kind of a trap that gets played. Um, I was playing the advanced mage earlier and they had a... Um, it wasn't a frost shield, but it was something like frost armor or frozen armor or something like that. That whenever I attacked her or whenever she took damage, it essentially it popped and gave her eight armor, which soaks up damage before your hit points go. Um, so what I wanted to do is kind of just show you a little bit about what's going on here. I'm just going to pay the basic class for this, and then I'm going to show you a little bit of the UI as we go through this thing. Um, so as far as my first class, um, again, all of these are going to be locked until you go through there and you beat them in the practice mode. Um, so I am going to go ahead and pick uh, one of my favorites so far, which is going to be Rexar. I really love his ability um, to start things out with. It's a direct attack against the hero. Um, and essentially this game is going to be playing my hero versus your hero. I've also got a custom mage deck that's going to be uh, pretty heavy on the murlocs. Um, I need to unlock more murlocs before it's really a murloc deck, but uh, whenever I started seeing that some of the murlocs can actually synergize with the other ones, I really wanted to make a, uh, a murloc deck. Uh, the custom road is just throwing in some of the advanced powers that they have now um, that I've unlocked for her. Uh, she's, I think, level... I think she's level 11, or she's level 10 now, so once you get level 10 again, you get the expert mode. Um, some of these I haven't played yet. 
Um, so the Druid, Priest, Warlock, and Paladin haven't really had time to get in there yet. I am a big fan of the Paladin and the Priest, though. They, I've seen people play them online, and they, um, they, are, they are very lethal. And uh, they have the ability to stay alive, which is, which is really huge in this game. Uh, so I'm going to pick Rexar, and um, I wish there was a random button. But there's not. So we're just going to go through here. I'm going to close my eyes. And looks like we got Anduin. Rexar versus Anduin. The light shall bring victory. Let the hunt begin. Okay, so it looks like our starting hand is an Iron Fur Grizzly. It's got Taunt, which essentially means the creatures and the hero have to kill this before they can attack me or any other creature. Um, I have Tracking, which allows me to look at the top three cards and pick one that I like. And then Timber Wolf, which gives my other beast plus one. This is an okay starting hand, um, especially with that Tracking in there. I'm going to go ahead and keep that, and I'm going to play first. And I think I'm going to go ahead and play... I feel, oh, I got two Timber Wolves. I think I'm going to go ahead and open up with a Timber Wolf, since I got the other one. Um, I was going to do Tracking. Is someone injured? Okay, and they play a Northshire Cleric, and this Cleric, whenever it is healed, uh, whenever a minion is healed, they draw a card. Okay, so you actually should draw two for that, but I only saw one. Awesome thing about this is that um, each thing that is done throughout the game is actually going to be stored on the left side. Um, so it'll kind of give you a play-by-play -play as you're going through if you forget something. Um, you can also interact with the stuff here. Oh, can I launch that now? Oh, I did. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't realize that was going to happen. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to play that. And that's going to give that wolf two. And uh, use my arcane arrow to drop the toughness of that down by three. Um, I'm okay with that being up right Job's now. Done. I don't want to leave it up there forever, though. I'll feel a lot better about this if I can get my iron for Grizzly out without losing. Ah, I lost the wolf. Okay, so the iron for Grizzly is definitely coming out now. And uh, we're going to pop Anduin again for another one. So essentially this game, I win or you win depending on whose life total drops to zero or lower first. Um, that's immediate uh, end of the game. Um, you can see here this little token next to Rexar here is my steady shot ability. It allows me to directly damage the enemy too. And uh, Anduin's ability is a lesser heal which allows you to restore two health. Um, so that's pretty handy as well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do a River Crocolis here. And I'm going to use my hero power to shoot Anduin for, for two. And then I'm going to use my Iron for Grizzly ability to directly attack that, and then I'll pop Anduin for one. Is you can see her, his hand has just got eight cards in there what now. <laughs> she pops another Northside Cleric, or Shire Cleric, rather. And a Grunt. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use my multi-shot ability. This is going to deal three damage to two random enemies. So what I'm hoping for is for this and this to get off the table. Oh, you know what? Not terrible. I'm okay with that. Um, as long as the guy with taunt is off, I'm good. And you know what? We're going to go ahead and play tracking as our last ability here just to see. Oh, I was hoping for a hound master. I'm going to go ahead and pull this hound master because it's battle cry, which is an ability that activates as soon as the minion is put into play. Um, it gives a beast plus two uh, to uh, attack and plus two to health um, and the taunt ability. So it makes it act like a tank. Um, so I can essentially buff up a big uh, beast that I have on the board already. Um, like this river crocolis. Okay. Sinjin shield master is out. Okay, ooh, I could wait and put the core hound into play and then put my hound master. The only problem with dropping a big beast like the core hound is that there's going to be a lot of aggro on that beast. It does 9 damage, so it's going to, um, unless I had something right away to block with, which this creature should go away next turn. 
Um, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do the Razor Friend Hunter now. And I am going to pop Anduin for another two. And that's going to leave me with a bit of a pickle here. Um, I can go ahead and get rid of this Singe and Shield Master. The only problem with that, though, is I'm going to lose two of these creatures. Uh, but since I'm kind of winning right now, I think I'm going to go ahead and be okay with that. So I'll pop him for four, and then I'll use this other one to pop him for three. I could have I sacrificed my Timberwolf, but uh, long-term strategy, I want to keep that plus one out here, especially when the Core Hound comes out. Um, okay, this is good. So I'm going to drop the Core Hound out there. And all of these guys are going to attack Anduin. Next turn, I will use the Hound Master, assuming my Core Hound is still up there, and make the Core Hound a tank and have the taunt ability. We must cleanse the Sunwell. What's cool about the uh, Girabashi Berserker is that when this minion takes damage, it actually gets plus three to its attack. So it came out a 2-7, I believe, and now it's a 6-6. Six, six. Um, but, oh, and another Core Hound. Um, but that isn't going to be enough to stop this just sheer nastiness that's coming his way. Um, I'll send my Boren after there. I'm going to go ahead and pop for another two. I'll deal one damage there. Ready for action! 12 damage there. This is going to leave Anduin with only one hit point, and it's going to make it very precarious for him to pull out this victory. And I still have yet to take damage. Okay, he brings out something else with Taunt. Well, so far, so good. My Core Hound's still up. I'll drop another one down this turn. And, uh, you know, it just depends on, uh, really at this point, how do I want to win. And um, I always prefer dealing damage with my hero directly to get that victory. So, <laughs> GG, Anduin. And I'll just give the computer a nice well played. Show that I'm a good sport. So that was a good kind of intro to how this game is going to work. You saw I got a little bit of experience there, enough to get me to 7th level. So n actually at 8th level I'll unlock two cards, uh, two copies of Tundra Rhino, um, which will be interesting. Um, let me just show you a little bit more of the UI. Um, there is a store here which I can cash my gold in for packs. Um, I could also go through and buy packs. 40 packs of cards for $50. Seems like a good deal. Um, there's also a quest log. Uh, the quest log kind of gives you a total of uh, your wins and losses. So yesterday I was playing the play mode quite a bit. And I was pretty successful in that. I'll do some uh, definitely some live plays um, with play mode here in the future. And also the arena mode I want to talk about. Arena mode is actually something that's very, very cool. Uh, typically with the arena mode there's going to be some sort of buy-in. I'm going to go ahead and click on it now. So let's see what the arena says. Okay. So it looks like it's either going to be $2 to enter the arena or a dollar uh, or 150 gold, which I don't have enough of right now. Um, but the arena, actually, in the first time you do it, it's free. So um, I like that big warning that you're about to spend real money. That's nice. Thanks for that, Blizzard. Um, the arena mode, I, you essentially, uh, it's a sealed play type of mechanic. Um, I get a, a choice of three different heroes that are randomized. Once I click that hero, I actually can go through there and build a deck, and it'll give me three cards at a time, and I basically pick one and discard the other two. Um, I'll go through that until I have a deck of 30 cards. From then, I play uh, essentially a league play with, uh, within the arena against other players who are sealed until I have three losses. Uh, I, I went three and three last night when I was playing, and um, I had a blast doing it. And a, I got a little bit of loot for it. I got some crafting um, arcane dust. Let me go to my packs here. Or, sorry, my collection. That's what I meant to do. Should be a collection right there. 
Um, so uh, this is crafting mode yet. I'm not 100% how things work here. I know I do get this arcane dust, which I can then use to enchant, I believe, cards and then create cards that I'm missing. So I do have some extra cards here that I can disenchant. Um, so I've got one common I can disenchant for five. Um, we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so I got some arcane dust there. And, um... Let's see, can I actually go through here and create something? Now I'm just fiddling. <clears throat> Let's see what kind of neutral cards we can craft. Um, Leaper Gnome. Okay, I've got one Leaper Gnome now. Okay, so it's going to cost 40 to actually create the, another Leaper Gnome. Um, and I'd get rid of it with some dust, but I don't want to definitely don't want to get rid of it. Uh, Leaper Gnome's cool because it has an ability called Death Rattle, which is something that happens when the card dies, and it deals two damage directly to a hero, which is pretty awesome. Um, and it's a 2 1, so it's going to be dealing two damage around while it's out on the table, and then when it dies, it, it still does the two damage all for one mana cost, which is pretty big. Um, let's see here. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and craft another one. So, let's create. And there we go. Just like that, we have got another Leaper Gnome. Neat. What about one of these cards I don't have here? Can I... Okay, so that's going to be 400 to craft. 40 to craft. Okay. Angry Chicken. It's going to be 100 to craft the Angry Chicken. It enrages plus 5 attack. Um, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Mike Sass, for uh, for designing that chicken. That's awesome. Um, so Hearthstone is going to give you everything that you kind of grow uh, and know and love about the Warcraft universe in the past uh, 18 years or however long it's been since Orcs and Humans. Um, it's, you know, Blizzard's always had a always been able to really execute well on delivering very very serious gameplay but still make things interesting by incorporating good humor like the angry chicken here um very cool stuff here here's a shield bearer how much are you 40 to create <clears throat> Ooh, a worgen infiltrator this thing's got stealth uh, essentially stealth uh, they're invisible until you attack with them um, and that's pretty interesting. Uh, let me actually go through here and look at some of the Hunter cards I don't have unlocked yet. Like, Scenarius. This is an epic. And it's going to be 1600 dust to go ahead and create that. I'm a little low on that. What else do we have here? Bestial Wrath. Oh, you know what? I was in the Druid. <clears throat> oh, King Crush. Nice, an 8-8 beast with charge. Uh, charge is essentially haste. Gladiator's Longbow. It's 400. Eagle Horn Bow. Um, you know what? Let me go ahead and create that. <clears throat> you can actually equip these items onto characters, including your hero, and have this damage. This is how much damage you'll do with it, and this is how many uses, essentially, you'll have to it. It's kind of the durability of whatever that weapon is. Um, so from here, I, I can go ahead and close crafting mode out, and um, I can create a new deck, and we can make a new custom Rexar, and uh, we can toss in some things that we're missing from the other deck, such as the Eagle Horn Bow that we just created. We drag that over just like that, and it's going to show us how many cards we have left available. So there's 30 cards total there. Um that we can put in. You can have two copies essentially of each card and then it'll lock that type out. Um, I've got two Hunter's Marks and I really like that. Change Minion's Health to one. Uh, a little crowd control is always nice. Starving Buzzard, whenever you summon a beast, draw a card. Uh, Arcane Shot, I like the two damage. Um, Animal Companion, yeah, buddy. Uh, definitely going to have multi-shot in there. It's a huge card for crowd control. I want to make this kind of a heavy beast deck, so I'm going to throw the Timber Wolf in there. Um, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put the Starving Buzzards in there. I'm probably going to throw Tracking in there, um, but right now I am going to skip ahead. Um, 
and definitely toss in these hound masters um, so let me go ahead and throw a couple of those trackings into this oh there we go um, so I've got everything pretty much locked out as far as the hunter specific cards now let's go through here and add some um, other types of things and I want beast as the type of card so we're gonna go with the stone tusk boars uh, we're definitely gonna oh the wind fury could be nice pirates what else do we have here mm, I'm not too into the silence I really like these river crocolisk it's a two three for two um, and that's all right Um, you know, let's throw a back one of these. You know, I'm not a, actually a big fan of that silverback patriarch. Uh, so we'll toss in definitely the ironborn grizzlies. Always oh, a snap jaws. This could make good tanks with the hound with the hound masters. Um, we're also going to want to definitely throw in these core hounds. Okay, so I've got s essentially three more cards I can put in there, or or six essentially. Um, so I can put three copies of two. Um, I'm thinking maybe some other damage dealers here. Maybe stray from the beast just a bit. Get some things that are gonna buff. So I, I'm a big fan of the raid leader. And I'm a huge fan of these... Where are they? I think they're a five. There they are. The knight was looking right at them the whole time. The knight blades here. I'm a big fan of these knight blades. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and throw some storm pike commandos in here while we do that. So... Oh, did I must have counted wrong? Or I threw something back by accident. Um... But I have three cards left. And that's okay. Let me get some bigger... Um, these Stormwind Champions, those are huge. And then we'll go ahead and throw in one Lords of the Arena. There we go. Alright. So that is done. Um, I haven't found out a way to name this at all. So you can see there, it kind of gives me a uh, general graph. Oh, there we go. Name. So let's just call this um, Beast of Burden. Done. There we go. Um, so you know what? Let's take Beast of Burden out to play for a second. Okay. Choose Rexar, and we will... You know, this time, let's, let's go with... Let's go with Garage. You know, he's pretty relevant right now. And I just don't like him. Rexa versus Garage. Victory on death. Yeah, we'll go Let out. the hunt begin. We'll taunt him a bit too. Um, I don't necessarily know if I want to hold on to the core hound um, right now, so we're gonna go ahead and replace him. I like the other ones though. Um, good for early game. And I get the coin. Since I lost the toss, I get the coin. And you know what? Let's throw it. I will up. hunt you down. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pass this turn. And I'm going to throw my Iron for Grizzly out next turn while playing the coin. Uh, since I lost the toss, the coin allows me to get additional mana for this turn only. So let's go ahead and drop that. Oh. And toss out our Grizzly. Job done. Don't mess with Tusker! Okay. Looks like the Grizzly's gonna go down right away. Oh, the figure that boar is not. You know what? We can throw some backup out for him. Or. Let's do this. Let's arcane shot that boar. Drop the starving buzzard out there. Um, this is going to allow us to attack Garrosh for three. Now, I attacked him for three, but it only took one damage because Garrosh's ability allowed him to have two armor. And again, that's going to soak up damage as we're going through. Um, oh, perfect. 
We're going to go ahead and Hunter's Mark that. And we will play another Grizzly. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and finish off that Shield Master. Okay, Girabashi Berserker. Interesting. Ah, oh, man, I kind of wish I could... Oh, look at that. Right when I was about to say it, I wish I would have saved my Hunter's Mark. But it looks like the game's got our back here, and I like that. Um, let's go and toss out an Animal Companion. Random Animal Companion is going to be Misha. 4-4 four, four Bear with Taunt. Misha is Rexar's pet bear, um, if you're a big fan of the WoW mythos. Um... And since I played a creature, I got to draw a card because of my owl here. Um, and you know what? I hate to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice the buzzard. Excuse me, not owl. And you know what? No, I'm not going to do that at all. I'm going to go ahead and attack. Garage. Tazdingo! Yes! Rosh has got an attack. Okay, okay. I don't mind that at all. Now let's go ahead. Ooh, let's go ahead and do an animal companion again. And I get a boar, I get Huffer, nice. And it's got charge, so he can immediately attack. And I'm gonna go ahead and buff all of these guys up by one. Um and I think Huffer... Huffer's going to fight bravely, but he's going to go down this round, I think. Um, we're going to go ahead and take out the Shield Master. And with Misha, we'll attack. And our Buzzer will go and attack. And we are just... At this point, and in the garage. Basic garage, that is. Okay, the Dragonling mechanic is going to bring out an actual mechanical Dragonling whenever she is summoned. Um, so she's, that's a pretty cool card. Um, do that to be able to draw a card. And we get tracking. Um, so we've got this game in the bag. Again, how do we want to win it? Um, so I, I always want to be the one to put the nail in the coffin myself. So here goes our steady shot. Oh, wait, no. He had armor on. I didn't realize. Oh, that's too bad. So I get a card. We can bring out the uh, Stormwind Champion. That's a great card to give you buffing. It's a 6-6 six, six, and all other minions have plus one, plus one. Um, and we'll let Misha take care of the rock. Okay, so that is going to do it for this episode of Hearthstone. Now, I'm going to be wanting to do a lot of Hearthstone play, definitely in my spare time. I'm going to want to record quite a bit of it as well. So, if you have any questions, any comments, concerns, please comment here on YouTube. Also, drop us a like and um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's going to be lots of Hearthstone stuff and other gaming stuff coming up. Um, we do all sorts of stuff. So, tabletop, um, between role-playing card games and board games, and also computer games. Games. and the Xbox One's launching next month and I'll be doing a lot of stuff with that um, so again thank you so much for watching this video um, we are going to be doing a lot of Hearthstone this game is a load of fun and I'm um, really looking forward to getting into some more of the advanced mechanics as the days and weeks progress uh, thank you so much for watching and game on